Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to the uh, World Food Prize Hall of Laureates. On behalf of my wife, Lay Sun, John and Janice Ruan, uh, all of us at the World Food Prize want to say how pleased that you are here for the Borlaug, uh, Norman Borlaug Award for Field Research and Application endowed by the Rockefeller Foundation. I have to take a breath after saying that name. So from here on in, I'm going to call it the Borlaug Field Award and ask your uh, in indulgence and understanding in my using the shorthand. Now, uh, we're so, uh, so very honored to have you here, have Her Excellency, the Vice President of Peru, uh, Mercedes Arios, Your Excellency, thank you for being here. It's been our special guest of honor all week and uh, has been at every event. So if you could join me in expressing our appreciation to her, please. We, I was uh, making a point, yesterday was World Food Day, and we're, you know, we vie with Rome about who has the biggest and best uh, world, UN World Food Day celebration. And, you know, they're a big organization and do, but we have uh, 18 World Food Prize laureates who are here with us in this room. They're out here. And uh, so we've got more life-saving achievement in this building, <laughs> in this building right now than any place else on the world. So let's join in expressing our admiration of them. And particularly our two new laureates, and that Lawrence Haddad, David Nabarro, welcome to the family. I told you it's a slow process. We'll get to Thursday night, but you're, you have your pins now, so you're official laureates. Welcome, please stand up so we can recognize you. Uh, uh, and that Borlaug family is here, Jeannie Borlaug Laube, Julie Borlaug. Thank you so much for being here. This award named in your dad and your grandfather's honor means so much to have you here in the Norman Borlaug Hall of Laureates at the Borlaug Dialogue as we honor the Borlaug Ruan International Internship. Uh, and uh, we want to make sure your dad's never forgotten in all that he did and uh, it means so much. Thank you for being here with us tonight. And that, so let's welcome the Borlaugs. <laughs> World Food Prize Council of Advisors are here, the body that keeps me on the straight and narrow and my staff, we're so pleased uh, they're here. Um, Dr. Shavonda Jacobs-Young is here, the administrator of the Agricultural Research Service, great friend of the World Food Prize, she comes to all our events. She's at our Iowa Youth Institute. She plays a central role in our Wallace Carver fellowships. We send students to USDA every year. You're a wonderful friend. And you nominated our winner this year. So uh, that's, that's, a, that's the trifecta. So stand up here. For, please stand up so we can recognize you. The Attorney General of Iowa, Tom Miller, is here. Tom, uh, Tom and I grew up together in Dubuque, Iowa, on the Mississippi, and uh, he will soon be the longest-serving Attorney General. I shouldn't say this right, uh, Jean, but longest-serving Attorney General in uh, any state in the United States of America. So what? Yeah. So I'm so proud of him. You know. Two, two kids from Dubuque, at least one of them made good. So that's uh, and here uh, and that. So uh, we have the, pr some previous winners of this award. Over there, Aditi Murkaji. Where's Aditi? Stand up. And Graham Goldberg. And Andrew Mude. Andrew, where? Andrew there? Andrew's not here? Oh, we're going to take his uh, prize money back. Uh, uh, to, yeah, all right, yeah. Write, write it down, uh, Ellen. That's, uh, yeah, and then. Uh, so I, um, I and uh, is Dean Greg Cuomo here from the University of Minnesota? I saw him earlier today, and uh, our, our winner, uh, 
Matthew Rouse is, uh, works for USDA at the, I don't know quite how this works, at the University of Minnesota. His email is Minnesota, so, but the, it's an important connection uh, in there and we want to welcome him on this. And I want to say a special word of welcome to the Rouse family. Alicia, welcome to you. Uh, Matt, to your mom and dad, who I just had the pleasure uh, of meeting. So glad you could be here uh, tonight when uh, we honor your son. So to uh, the chairman of the jury that selects our winner each year is Dr. Borlaug's only graduate student who was with him working in Mexico when he was making his biggest developments, who was inspired by him all his life in his own career and own research and distinguished career, now is the head of international programs in the College of Agriculture at Cornell University. Whenever I write to him, he's always some exotic place around the world. Um, we, we, we've had a couple of adventures together in Obregon, uh, honoring uh, your dad and grandfather down there. And he has been an indispensable part of the World Food Prize for almost the entire time I was here. And towards the end of Dr. Borlaug's life, he, uh, he and I were sitting together in my office over in the Ruan building. And uh, he, having a sense that time was running out, said a couple of things he wanted to be sure of. And one was that he always wanted to have Ronnie Kaufman at the heart of the World Food Prize because he knew that Ronnie understood him, understood his view, understood his passion for agriculture, and would continue his traditions. And so Ronnie has always been a member of, of our Council of Advisors. He plays this central role, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Ronnie Kaufman. It's always great to be introduced by Ken Quinn. It's good to be called a graduate student again, Ken. <laughs> so welcome to you all uh, to the 2018 Norman Borlaug Field Award. You see, Ken, I took that note. Uh, we're shortening it uh, just so it's easier to pronounce. Tonight, we honor the seventh recipient. Uh, this award, as Ken mentioned, is endowed by the Rockefeller Foundation. Uh, and I think we ought to start by thanking them. It's a $1 million endowment that... Uh, <laughs> so I want to remind you all that uh, this uh, field award is designed to honor a young agricultural scientist who's working closely in the field, uh, as, of course, Norman Borlaug did so well, on applied research with crop farmers, livestock producers, other people in rural communities involved in disciplines or enterprises across food production, processing, and distribution chains. So as chairman of the selection committee for this award, I want to really encourage you to think of someone that you could nominate uh, next year, really. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jacobs Young, for doing the needful this year. This lady is a role model. So, uh, you know, look in your organization. You have outstanding people, uh, young people. Identify them and and, and nominate them because uh, uh, we need we need to recognize uh, these young people. There are many deserving young men and women out there, but they really can't win un unless you. Uh, nominate them. So please take the time. Take the time to document their their efforts. Uh, and uh, next year, the, the deadline is June 30th. And just keep in mind that the scientist has to be under 40 at the time of the, at, at, on this date, uh, next, next, next year. So uh, please, please keep that uh, in mind. I've shortened my speech a little bit here because you got, I hope you all read your, your, your handout. It has a lot of nice information in it about the 
uh, awardee, and but I want to add to that, uh, Dr. Rouse is directly meeting the challenges of, of food security, especially in, as security relates to wheat and barley production. He's a scientist who's at home among the many farmers he serves, as he is in the field or in his research lab. And he more than meets the award criteria for the Norman Borlaug Field Award. He's a research pathologist, as you all know, at the USDA ARS Serial Research Lab in St. Paul, Minnesota, and an adjunct associate professor at the University of Minnesota. He's receiving the 2018 Norman Borlaug Award uh, for field research for the essential role that he's played in the control, management, and continued efforts related to UG99 and the devastating races of stem rust that threaten the world's wheat and barley crops. Point of full disclosure here is that I'm the vice chair of the Borlaug Global Rust Initiative. <laughs> and, but the chair is here, Jeannie, Jeannie Borlaug. So I you know, have worked closely with Matt over the years. Uh, I guess it's been 10 years even, uh, Matt. Uh, but I, and I couldn't be more thrilled that he rose to the top in the selection process for the field award. Obviously, I'm not by a long shot the only member on the jury. So he was a, absolutely a unanimous choice. He's been one of the stellar young wheat scientists in the Borlaug Global Rust Initiative for 10 years, involved in both the durable rust resistance and wheat project and the current delivering genetic gain in wheat project. Both projects are funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and UK, UK Aid through the Department uh, of International Development of the United Kingdom. Program officers in both organizations have remarked on Matt's contribution to the global fight against tweet rust to doing whatever was needed to speed up the delivery of new sources of rust resistance to wheat breeders. Dr. Rouse represents many of the attributes embodied by Dr. Borlaug, <coughs> excelling in persistence, innovation, communication, education, research, and leadership. So I just want to take a few minutes to look at how he exemplifies those attributes. Dr. Rouse demonstrates Borlaug's persistent, never give up attitude. Over the past 10 seasons, as coordinator of the ARS Spring Wheat Nursery Project in Kenya and Ethiopia, he scored between 40,000 and 80,000 infection types each season, supporting over 20 breeding programs around the world and more than 15 international wheat genetics programs working on characterizing stem rust resistance genes. Dr. Rouse's identification of new sources of resistance will benefit wheat improvement efforts for many years, many years to come in all wheat producing countries. As an example of his innovation and dedication in 2013, a race of stem rust pathogen unrelated to UG99 caused an epidemic in Ethiopia on the recently deployed UG99 resistant variety Digaloo. There was an immediate need for additional screening facilities in Ethiopia to evaluate wheat materials against this race. Dr. Rouse formed a rapid response team, including scientists at the EIER, that's the Ethiopian Institute of Agricultural Research, CIMIT, and ARS to facilitate the isolation of the new race. He then developed a research plan to establish four field stem rust nurseries at the EIR Kalumsa Station. The screening nurseries allowed identification of resistance to this new epidemic race and investigations into the stability of adult plant resistance to multiple stem rust races. During the 2014 crop season, Dr. Rouse traveled Ethiopia seven times. Economy class, right? <laughs> He works for the government, after all. Uh, seven times, and he spent more than two months in the field in Ethiopia that, that year to make certain that the research was, was successful. This reflects an important aspect of Dr. Rouse's work ethic, the willingness to do whatever it takes to get the job done 
one of the mottos that Dr. Borlaug lived by throughout his entire life. Matt work, Matt's work has led to the increase of several, to the release of several successful varieties resistant to UG99, including Linkert in the US, NARC 2011 in Pakistan, and Kingbird in Ethiopia. And from 2011 to present, Dr. Rouse has authored or co-authored 75 research papers pertaining to the sources and genetics of stem rust resistance. Like Dr. Borlaug, Dr. Rouse firmly believes in mentoring young scientists. He's a skilled teacher who's been instrumental in establishing educational programs in Ethiopia to teach researchers how to characterize rust pathogens, how to breed for better, more resistant wheat varieties. He shares his knowledge with students and scientists through training programs, including visiting Borlaug Research Fellows and researchers in screening nurseries in Ethiopia and Kenya. He's helped train more than 30 visiting scientists from 15 countries, eight Borlaug Fellows, numerous, uh, numerous undergraduate students, and has directly advised 11 graduate students. In addition, he leads tours of the ARS Zero Disease Lab for high school students through the Minnesota Youth Institute. Dr. Rouse is also a skilled communicator. He was the narrator, script writer, and camera presence in the race analysis training video, which is now widely used by all the trainees in the Borlaug Global Rust Initiative, a video that's helped many scientists learn race analysis of all the cereal fungi. Now, Dr. Rouse was born on April the 2nd, 1983 in Pasadena, California, which is not exactly the center of agricultural production, I guess, uh, Matt. Uh, so it's interesting to trace his passion uh, and how he got involved in agriculture, much of which is outlined in the document there, so I hope you've read it. But I want to mention that he got his BS in zoology from Oklahoma State, his MS in plant pathology from Kansas State, and his PhD in plant pathology from the University of Minnesota. Now that last one really does make him like Dr. Borlaug. I don't suppose we have anybody here from Minnesota. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just a few, yeah. So his journey eventually took him uh, to the Serial Disease Laboratory in St. Paul and the Department of Plant Pathology where, he's began working on wheat stem, where he began working on wheat stem rust. Within the first month as a graduate student, he traveled to Enjoro, Kenya, and saw firsthand the yield losses that this disease was causing in the fields of poor subsistence farmers who depend on wheat for their food and livelihoods. That was the trip, but that's when I first met Matt when he was on that trip to Kenya. Since the first trip in, 20, in 2007, Dr. Rouse has continued his work in Africa and he's now the coordinator of the ARS Spring Wheat Nursery Screening Facilities in Kenya and Ethiopia. He's used this opportunity to learn more about the impact of UG99 on wheat production, to work with local farmers, and to collaborate with researchers from around the world. These experiences expanded Matt's professional goals to the global arena and drove home a sense of urgency in finding solutions to the research, to his research finding solutions his research seeks, sorry. Dr. Rouse's work ethic and approach to adversity reflects Dr. Borlaug's never give up, reach for the stars attitude. This attitude has led Dr. Rouse, has, <coughs> has led to Dr. Rouse receiving the prestigious Emerging Leader in Applied Science, an Applied Plant Science Award from the University of Minnesota in 2017 for his contributions to the fields of plant pathology and genetics, leadership in the field, and demonstrated innovation and progressive research. And he received the 2014 Midwest Area Early Career Research Scientist of the Year Award from USDA ARS. So we want to congratulate Dr. Rouse for drawing inspiration from Norman Borlaug's lifelong commitment to working side to side with farmers to take it to the farmer by bringing research to the field and helping provide farmers with new genetic resources 
that make a difference with yields and inputs. Dr. Rouse, we are inspired by your vision, your work ethic, your success in the lab and in the field with farmers. And the last page, we wish you continued success on your journey working with wheat and barley farmers. Dr. Borlaug would be proud of you because truly you do take it to the farmer. Please come forward and receive the award. Well, thank you very much, Ronnie, for the extensive introduction. And um, um, and thank you and the, and the selection committee for this great honor. Um, I'd like to thank Ambassador Quinn and the World Food Prize staff and the Rockefeller Foundation for all of their support and work to continue the legacy of Dr. Borlaug in part through this field award. I'd like to thank Dr. Borlaug for his lifelong passion and drive to end food insecurity through applied research. I also thank Dr. Chavandra Jacobs-Young for her leadership and for nominating me for this award. Also at the USDA ARS, I'd like to thank the national program team, including Jose Costa, Tim Widmer, and Kay Simmons, who have directed my research mission Jose Costa in particular has encouraged me to work beyond just identifying resistance genes, but to bring those genes into the field. The Midwest area team, including JL Willett and Larry Chandler, who have told me to think about the investment that the US taxpayer has made in my research and how I can return that investment. Collaborators David Marshall, Mike Bondman, and Tyler Gordon for their work and leadership in evaluating US wheat in Africa the Delivering Genetic Gain in Wheat Team, Ronnie Kaufman, Maricela Acevedo, Sarah Davidson at Venega, and Gordon Caesar for their support and their constant reminder to take it to the farmer. Collaborators at CIMIT, such as Ravi Singh, Sridhar Bhavani, Bekele Abeo, Ayele Badibo, for their hard work ethic that has served as an example to me and truly carries on the Borlaug legacy. Doctors Ashetu Durso, Badada Gurma, and Pekeli Hundi at the Ethiopian Institute of Agricultural Research for their facilitation of international partnerships in Ethiopia, often in the midst of political instability. Kathy Khan at the Gates Foundation for years of service in promoting smallholder farmers around the world. I'd like to thank the people I work the most closely with at the Serial Disease Lab and at the University of Minnesota including research leader Sharyar Kianian, Yu Jin, Les Sabo, Jim Anderson, Pablo Oliveira, Sam Stockson, Samantha Armentrout, Julia Mitchell, Arena Ide, and Mabub Ramatov for their dependable work and thoughtful advice. Yu Jin in particular has encouraged me to think outside of the status quo in science. I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Alicia, my parents, my brothers, my family for their, for their years of support. And as a sinner saved by grace through faith, I'd like to thank Jesus for changing my life. While I was completing graduate studies at Kansas State University in 2007, I worked part-time at a farm that was impacted by a wheat leaf rust epidemic that resulted in a 14% yield loss across the entire state of Kansas. I remember seeing a field of wheat that was red instead of green and being stunned that it was 2007 and somewhere like Kansas in the United States could be impacted in this way. And I had the thought, shouldn't we have figured this out by now? With this experience and mentoring and encouragement from Drs. Bob Bowden, Bill Bacchus, and Karen Garrett, 
I decided to pursue a PhD in plant pathology at the University of Minnesota, just like Borlaug. At the U of M, I was mentored by Dr. Yu Jin, who is one of the international experts on the emerging threat of UG99. On one of my trips to Africa as a graduate student, I remember a farmer standing in his wheat field in Ethiopia. And that field was completely yellow, not green, because of a rust epidemic. And knowing that that farmer's livelihood and that of his family and the surrounding community was impacted, um, really, and it was really depending on that field, gave me a perspective that rust is not only an economic limitation, but a real threat to food security and people's lives. Food insecurity and lack of adequate nutrition is still a problem today. Devastating crop diseases, such as the wheat rust, are able to move across continents, irrespective of political boundaries and geographical changes in policy. The biggest limitations to working with rust diseases are that they move and change. Wheat varieties that were once resistant become susceptible as the pathogen adapts. And an example of that is wheat varieties, such as the one that Ronnie mentioned that was resistant to UG99, but broke down because of a different strain of the pathogen. So going forward, continuing our research collaborations and sustained research support will help us to make progress. But to fully address the changing pathogens, growing population, and political barriers, we need major game changes in agricultural research and development. New technologies, such as in crop genetic modification and gene editing, will dramatically expand the tools that we have available to address emerging and systemic agricultural limitations. This will unleash the full power of science to, to have great benefits to farmers across the globe. In summary, I encourage you to continue your international collaborations, hard work, and to use the latest technologies appropriately to take it to the farmer. Thank you. So, Matt, uh, to use the parlance of the baseball playoffs, I think you just hit a home run. <laughs> no, not. Um, so, uh, continuing, all, all of our recipients come here and when they're acknowledged, uh, have an inspiring message. You've done that again tonight. I, I do feel compelled to say something about the references to the University of Minnesota. Um, since we in Iowa think that you stole Norman Borlaug from us. <laughs> but I want you to know we don't hold a grudge. When we put his statue, when Iowa put his statue in the U.S. Capitol, uh, I was the chairman of the committee and I told the artist to put his University of Minnesota M ring on his hand. So uh, it's, we, we've got a soft spot in our heart too because Norm loved the University of Minnesota as well. So this is a, a great evening. Uh, thank you all for coming. There's a reception that will follow. You can't leave until, if you've never been up on the second floor of the building on the mezzanine, let's go up there, go and see the Howard Buffett uh, photo exhibit. You'll be so glad that, that you did. And then there are other side events tonight and tomorrow morning, Everybody report to the symposium hall at 8.30 for Gordon Conway's farewell address. You don't want to miss that. Thank you again on behalf of John and Janice. And I should say, Suzanne Clark, thank you. You're their special guest who's here. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thank you all for being here. Please enjoy the reception. And uh, Dr. Jacobs Young, if you could come up, we could take a picture with you up here. With that, that. So thank you, please. Thanks. <laughs>